Oh, look at my early birds. You guys got a spot. Way to go. Molly, why do you look so confused? Hello, Molly. Hi, Laura. Hello, I'm eating dinner still. So. <laughs> Sweet. Don't, we don't mind me. <laughs> we haven't gotten to eat yet. Molly's like, can you see Molly? She looks very confused. I don't yeah, think she, she must can... not have audio or something. Like she's trying to figure it out. Molly. <laughs> no, you must not have audio. Do you want to say hi, Kate? Say hi to Eric. Hi. How are you? Hi. <laughs> She was asking, am I in the video? <laughs> what, what's for dinner? Um, ch chicken tortilla soup. Ooh, num. 21 day fix chicken tortilla soup? Is that a thing? It is a thing, but this is actually a Costco, check the Costco version. Hey, I look, it's- Make the good one. Look who's on. I think I know her. Yeah, I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Laura, you made it? I did, I'm still eating dinner though. I am doing algebra. So if I happen to look down, that's what I'm doing. The answer is C. Yeah, whatever. Did what you, are you do it today? <laughs> I, I did not comment C yet. Do you want me to go ahead and go comment C? One of these times you need to make the answer C, so I feel good about myself. I, I'm not a multiple choice teacher, Eric. <laughs> Isn't C ever an answer? Well, just like do a, isn't, well, I suppose, no, that'd be geometry. It's like you sides and C. Do you see Laura? I'm going in the other room. So my family can eat. Hi, Lily. Hi. Hi. All right, do you want to say hi to Kate? I'll go back so you can say hi to Kate. <laughs> I know, Kate's eating. That's okay, though. Molly say hi to Lily in time. Arizona. Look, there's Lily in Arizona. Hi. I can hear now. Hi, Kate. Hi. hi, Molly. Can you hear now, Molly? I can hear now, yes. <laughs> See, it's like, it's like the Brady Bunch here. It is. <laughs> you want me to sing the theme song? I know it. <laughs> All right, I have to find a place where I can go so my family is not interrupted. Sarah, so is it like 100 degrees right now? How warm is it? No, actually, it's chilly. We were um, down to about 78 on my drive home. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Did people have sweaters on? Basically. Like, I, I have never seen the 70s since we got here. But no a big storm is coming in. Hmm. That's pretty funny. Yep. But tomorrow it's back to 100, and then we're at 102, and Sweet. so it's up and down. But it's a dry heat. It actually isn't. Now, honestly, here's the ironic thing. Because it's so cool today, it's humid. Oh, it is? Really? Yeah, because of the storms, and I think it's more uncomfortable. Oh, I didn't think they got humidity. Yeah. Oh, there's Brian. Hi, Brian. I think I saw Jordy, too. Hi. There's a list all there. There's Jordy, Brian, Molly's gone. Everybody hopping on. There's Molly. How's it going, Brian? Yeah, there's this Zoom call. It's that beach body call. Brian, can you hear? I don't think Brian can hear. Brian looks confused. <laughs> I think he just got thumbs up. Can you hear Brian? You can talk. Say hello. I've got you. Oh, yeah. You have the kids, so you have probably had it on mute. That's right. I forgot. True. True. <laughs> I'm going to be under the radar. Sweet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute again in case we have a meltdown. <laughs> No problem. Right. Okay, if I mute, I'm yeah. losing you. When you mute, you can't hear me? He's messing with you. You, you can't hear me? I can't hear you now. <laughs> okay. You can hear me. There we go. Good. All right. <laughs> Just making sure. What are you doing? So I was reading the two we've been doing strikes. That's over here. He said there's more strikes done in a half hour. This is the reason. Really start again. It's okay. I'm going to get my notebook. 
Use a pen. Yeah, it does. I can see it. Just use a pen. Yeah. Why don't you just use a pen? All right. Well, just make sure the other part, the other side is still readable, okay? Someone talks, it makes them bigger. Why when you talk, does it not? Because we don't there's this corner there's the cornerback, he's, he creeped around. Hi, Laura. <laughs> How are you? Good, how are you? Good, I actually am walking in the door right now. <laughs> I'm glad you got on. <laughs> yeah. Dark in your house. Yeah. Um, not really. We just like the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you, though. <laughs> um, I'm going to mute myself and okay. I'll be right back on. No problem. Yeah. Hey, hey, Thompson kids, how are you liking Arizona? Good. Yeah. You like it? Yeah. Oh, that's that's Reese's thumbs up. <laughs> that's right. Now, do you know who this guy is? Do you, do you know who he is? That is Jim's brother, Jim Tostrup. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so he knows Noah and Jonah and Grace and Maureen. Yes. Yeah, I don't know if I ever connected the dots for them on that. Maybe not. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to get Maureen and Jim to come out here. Oh, uh, yeah? Because they don't go anywhere, ever. That's true. And so if they can just sneak away from the kids, all their room and board is covered. All yeah. they got to do is hop on a plane. Yeah. So hopefully by the end of the year. That would be a good idea. Yeah, they need to get out of Brown Town. Yeah, <laughs> Brown Town. It's so pretty, Brown Town. <laughs> <laughs> What? I don't think this is profoundly. I can't believe these words are on your whole oh, Jeff's on. It doesn't give me the definition. Jeff's on. Chosen in a sentence. Wow, Tiff, it's dark. Yeah. Are no you in the closet? <laughs> <laughs> Tiff, where are you? You're scaring me. <laughs> I'm, I'm in a relaxing living room right now. You're where? <laughs> Out of Sincerely. Say hi. Yeah. Say hi, everybody. Aww. Oh, so cute. <laughs> she doesn't want to sleep. Aww. <gasps> Show them your cute face. What's that cuteness? Hi, <laughs> so cute. I just walked in and I heard somebody screaming upstairs and it was her. So I, I had to get her. Oh, say hi. Say hi again. Hey. Say hi. She looks like There's she a lot of people in here. <laughs> she's sleepy. Yeah, she should be sleeping. <laughs> okay, I'll be back. Okay. <laughs> no. Does it say my name? Oh, there's Steve. You can see all the people that are on here. That's the guy who's leading the meeting. Steve. Hey, Steve. Hey, Jeff. How's it going? <laughs> Doing great. Thank you. How are you guys? Good. Excited for the call. Got <laughs> I'm excited to be here. Look at this crew. <laughs> Steve, Laura, Tiff, Brian, Laura, Sarah, Nexus 5. I like that name. That's a good name, Nexus 5. Molly. <laughs> <laughs> Jordy. 
Well, we'll give them a couple couple more minutes to make sure everybody's getting on here. All right, let's try. It. You can go back to multitasking. <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> Darren Hardy taught me not to. I still do it though. I can't. I know, I know. You, then you do mediocre at everything. Are you kidding me? Exactly, and that's not. We don't. We don't want that. No, we don't. Hey, Jeff, you haven't met my wife. This is Sarah. Oh my Hi. gosh, Sarah, we became friends today. I think, huh? In the virtual world. We did. I feel so close to you now. <laughs> I do too. I feel. I feel this kinship, this bond. You know, it has nothing to do with Eric. It's really between you and I. <laughs> Hi, Eric. Watch it. <laughs> Hey, I'm on the same boat here. I'm on the same boat, all right? I already told her our triathlon plans. Yes, and I'm planning on it. I Honestly, my brother actually just did Lake Tahoe, and my friend Lake Tahoe just uh, yesterday oh, cool. and had a great race. Yeah, he took a 17th in his age group and 46 overall. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's a freaking animal. Sarah's cousin did, what was it, Ma Nautica. Nautica in uh, Malibu. In Malibu. Sunday. Oh, geez. Yeah, really. Let's pick a, can we pick a worse destination, please? <laughs> God. Yeah. Well, I suppose we can probably, let's see, we got some phone callers in. A couple people working through technical difficulties, so we can probably just kind of get rolling. Everybody's probably already figured out that this is Jeff. Jeff is is your what's your official title regional sales director of the central region no, i'm actually do the dry cleaning for uh you know the executives here at the office i wash their car i dry clean their clothes you know if they need lunch then they tell me what they need that's kind of what i do around here Sweet. no i yeah i'm the regional uh sales manager for the central region i work with two to five star diamond coaches i work with arno nakaha who's the uh senior director he uh, he works with six stars to fourteen stars in the central region. He also work, He's also oversees Canada, so he's got a big responsibility there. And we also just uh, recently hired a, a new gal, um, Sydney Mauer, who works with our diamond trainings and one star diamonds as well. So if any of you guys are diamonds or soon to be diamonds, definitely reach out to Sydney Mauer on Facebook and uh, start getting to know her. And let's get you into her diamond trainings. Kevin. And so I'll type her name right here so you can find her. If you're planning on being diamond in the next week or so, or you currently are. Okay, great. But yeah. Well, if you guys, hey, for those of you guys on there right now, if you guys can mute, Stacy, I think if you can hit mute, I think you were the one with the dog. <laughs> there we go. Um, so you, I think you guys have probably figured out, Jeff is who I've been working with very closely the last, I think it's almost been two months, hasn't it? I think. It has, and it, we've only just begun, Eric. You just yes. have no idea what's coming. Jeff has been, honestly, you guys, really helpful. You guys know that there's nothing above me. So until now, you know, it's, it's been a collaborative thing with, with me and, and a bunch of the other coaches who, who are leaders and been in the little league. Jeff has really helped me with setting goals and really kind of helped me with my vision and moving the business forward. And then most importantly, helping you guys advance your business as, and become leaders as well. So I'm going to let Jeff kind of take her away. And, uh, you know, you guys, if you have questions, obviously you can pull up the chat and type them up in the chat. And uh, Jeff, why don't you just take off and, and go for it? Awesome. Eric, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I appreciate the intro. And once again, look at this team. What is it? B for you is that what kind of the acronym yep that's it that's it for you yep love it well well I'm, I'm honored to be on the team call here i'm honored to meet every one of you guys um i know there's plenty a lot of you guys i'd love to go around and uh, get to know you personally um so first and foremost i just want to say thank you you guys for all the hard work you guys do and for your commitment and loyalty to the uh, overall cause that Beachbody stands for. Uh, you know, that's the one reason I'm here as well. I have a nutrition background and a finance background. I was a finance economics major in college, did seven years in the uh, finance, economics, uh, real estate sector. And then I switched over new, to nutrition when my nutrition started getting becoming more important to me. And I joined a, uh, a publicly traded company. I was a brand manager over about 30 products then jumped over to a startup in nutrition, and then I came over to Beachbody. 
So I was real honored to come on with Beachbody because of the number one reason was the motto and cause and purpose of which Beachbody stands for. And that's changing lives and also being a great, a part of a great movement. Do you guys realize and actually, I want you just to step back for a minute and realize the cause that you're a part of. Um, you know, you think of all the propaganda, the media, that's all out there really promoting, you know, fast food, quick, easy fixes, this pill, that pill, go eat this high calorie thing, who cares? I mean, there's a lot of propaganda and media out there for that. Well, what's offsetting that? Who's actually promoting and, uh, you know, marketing the health side of things, healthy living, clean eating, exercise, transformations, live a healthier life? That's us. And so really, every time you make a post, every time you open your mouth, and share this opportunity with somebody. That's what you're doing. So transition yourself from, oh my gosh, I got to open my mouth and tell somebody about this. I'm scared to death to, I'm a part of a great movement. Put your chest up high, chin up high, be proud of what you stand for and move forward with a great cause. We're in a great cause to make a difference and change lives. Create that Mother Teresa opportunity within each of your lives that you currently live in. Okay, create that every day. What are you going to do to make a difference? I know that's why you're all here. Um, so with that being said, I do want to uh, just kind of give you a quick background. Yes, I'm a father of three daughters. I have a seven-year-old who just actually learned to ride a bike uh, this last week. So a big proud daddy, dad moment there. And I have a three-year-old um, who knows the alphabet better than I do. And then I have a uh, one-year-old, a uh, 13-month-old actually, and she just started walking this week as well. So big proud dad moments actually. Those are the biggest highlights that I've had. I also had the chance to travel. Uh, to South and North Dakota and Wisconsin for Beachbody, where I was hoping I would get close enough to the, to the I'm going to say your last name wrong, Eric, the Tostrans, Tostrad. That's what I said. You're on mute, so I'll just follow your mouth. Yes, Tostrad, that's what I said. Yep, you got like her. my last name is easy. What's that? You got her, close enough. Okay, oh, look at mine. Come on now. I dare you to try mine, Mr. Eric. Um, I just say Jeff K. <laughs> Dude, that, you can't, that's a cop-out. Are you kidding me? Cr Own it, man. You better say it. Crom and Hoke. Hawk. So hurt. Hawk. Hawk. Close enough. Close enough. Close enough, Eric. <laughs> anyway, um, Crom and Hook. Yeah. So I'm a father, you know, and so that's kind of my background with my girls situation. I do, I am an avid triathlete. I, I did eight races last year, 13 in 2013. I've done a total of about 59 races in the last nine years. Um, so that's kind of my passion, my love. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later as we incorporate some lessons uh, that we want to talk about. But first, I kind of want to just give you guys a little perspective on this business. For How many of you guys have been a coach less than six months? Raise your hands. Okay. All right, Brian. Okay, less than a year. All right, Molly. How about a year and a half? Laura? Nexus five. I know you're going to love that name by the time we're done here. Under two years. Okay. Okay. Steve, Sarah, you guys haven't raised your hands. How long have you guys been coaches? Three years, four years, five years, four years. Good. Perfect. Awesome. Steve, six. Awesome. Love it, Steve. Excellent. Well, no matter how, if you've been a coach for one day or over five years, this, this message that we'll talk about will apply to each and every one of you guys. Um, you know, the principles that we learn are a daily, daily thing. As you guys know, Beachbody came up with three vital behaviors, probably the most important three vital behaviors I've ever seen. Of the companies I've worked with as well, many of you guys are the same. How many of you guys worked for a company that promoted personal development as much as this company does? Exactly. I'm with you, Steve. None. You know, Beachbody wants you to come in, become a better person than when you came in. That's really, really why personal development's there as well is think of the handicaps that limit us from growing and becoming better and actually becoming the leaders that you, des you deserve to be and you know you are. It's through personal development. So I really appreciate that aspect of our three vital behaviors. And they're vital for a reason. They're the bloodline of this business. So I want every one of you guys to really execute on each of those categories of inviting, personal development, and um, being a product of the product in, in your everyday life. If you do so, you will be successful and there's a reason for it. So now let's kind of peel back the layers on what that means. So as a coach, uh, one question I have for you, what is the number one purpose of being a coach? Is it to hang out on these calls on a Monday night? Is it to go to lunches with uh, Eric and Sarah? Is it to, uh, 
you know, to have make new friends because I'm sure none of you guys have no friends at all. I mean, what is the purpose of 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 of, of being a Beachbody coach? Help people. Great answer. Great answer. And we help people by what? Every one of you guys came to this opportunity to look for an opportunity. You're either looking to find a vessel or a, an avenue to help people, you know, and others came here. You're looking for an opportunity. You want to make money for yourself, for your family, and maybe help people along the way. So let's think about that for a minute. Let's pull back. You're all entrepreneurs. You all pay, pay a fee to be a part of this business. As we all know, franchises out there cost a lot of money. So we're real lucky to be a part of a franchise that's very minimal to be making money. So keep that perspective in mind. Um, and with that being said is the number one objective is to help each other become business owners, okay? Uh, along with helping people and the great feeling of, of being that Mother Teresa to others, we want, we're here to help people. And we're also to be business owners. So we're gonna kind of talk a little bit on the business mind side of things. So I want you all to put your business caps on and when we talk numbers, we talk strategies. Once again, remember these are people. There's a name next to every number we talk about. When we say, hey, bring X amount of people on this month or let's rank advance, that's people we're talking about. That's lives being changed and that's broadening you, influencing even better, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, the other thing is talking about this business. You know, there's a couple different avenues in this business that really um, we kind of want to focus on a little bit. There's the uh, inviting side or the you know broadening your sphere of influence or the inviting side of this business right there's asking and opening your mouth or oim then there's the other element of developing coaches so you talk to somebody they say yes then what right what do we do with them next so there's two avenues that we want to kind of discuss we're going to talk about both how many of you guys also would like to know what the secrets that coaches are doing to elevate their businesses you know, rank advancing once a quarter or increasing their income by 50% or more each quarter. How many, of you, how many of you guys want to know the secrets to that? All right. So we'll talk about it. <laughs> we'll talk about that on this call. Okay. We'll talk exactly what coaches are doing and why. Okay. Um, so with that, let's kind of go back a little bit and kind of bring a perspective here with you guys. Uh, first and foremost, I kind of want to let you guys know I'm not a coach as you guys are. I work corporate, but the one one uh, value that I do bring to this call is I actually see what coaches are doing, what they shouldn't be doing, um, you know, out in the field, and, and we can kind of see exactly what works, what doesn't. We definitely want to share the fruits of the uh, success that others are having uh, here with you guys on this call, okay? How many of you guys, by raise of hands, are here for the fitness side of Beachbody? Just fitness is very important to you. You want, you know, fitness, certifications, that's important to you. Okay, some people come here and that's their number one focus. Others come because of clean eating. You know, they want everybody to be eating spinach like they are. Okay, um, clean eating is very important and you want to make sure others are eating uh, healthy as well. A third category is transformations. How many of you would love to see either in yourself or those you love or those you want to help, you know, feel a little more confident about themselves, fit into those clothes they used to fit in, you know, um, and, and, and transform their lives on a physical nature. And another one is financial. It's the business side of this. Some, some of you are here for the, for the financial opportunity of income, of making an income that surpasses what you're currently making or increasing your lifestyle on what it can be. And some of you guys are here for none of the above. Some of you guys are here for all of the above, okay? And as you think about it, there's, there's actual success in every, for every reason you came to Beachbody, there's equal success of coaches being um, in this business, okay? And so now the question is, why are they successful and what are they doing, okay? You will find that Eric, Eric and Sarah are fantastic leaders, okay? So I wanna kinda give them props. I've actually, as I've gotten to know Eric the last couple months and Sarah today, um, she and I have spent a lot of time together, so thank you, Sarah. Uh, no, we just became Facebook friends today, but I've been working with Eric and, and he has a great leadership attribute, you know, he's a great leader and he cares a lot about you guys. He talks about you guys and he wants the best for every one of you guys. And so now you guys have an opportunity moving into this final quarter of 2015 to be an elite team with obviously the toe struts as the, as the, head, of the, as the head of this team. And so now let's talk about what that means, okay? It means opportunity for you guys, okay? Um, we've kind of had a trend with coaches that really push for elite towards the latter part of the year. And that next year, a lot of opportunity comes your way. There's gonna be a lot of leadership opportunities for Eric, 
And uh, with you guys, you'll see the trickle of the momentum coming down to you guys as well as you build your businesses. And so we'll see every single one of you guys contending in next year, you know, getting your businesses into that star diamond category, a one star, two star, three star, four star and beyond. That's the reality of where we're headed. And so as a team, we want to rally together and make this a team goal and a team effort. So then everyone can capitalize on this opportunity. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit later about teamwork and how that plays into an individual game as this is. Eric and I talk about triathlons and endurance racing. And many of you guys on this call have probably have participated in some already as well. As you know, they're individual sports. But we're going to turn it into a team effort and what, team, what a team effort can do to make a success. Okay. Um, so I'm going to talk about that a little bit later as well. Um, so going back to uh, this being an elite team, let's challenge ourselves. And I want, as I talk, I want you to evaluate your own self and your own business on what you're doing, how you're doing it, and ways that maybe you can improve. We'll cover a lot of elements in this call as well, where certain things will stick out to you, certain things will resonate. Don't try to remember everything or think you need to incorporate everything all at once tomorrow. Take about, you know, three to five nuggets out of what we talk about that you want to work on, okay? So the first one I want to focus on is I would mentioned about coaches that are successful in the different, different categories, why they come to Beachbody. The two elements that I see resonate that come out of them all is actually consistency and belief, okay? So we're going to peel back the layers on what those two mean. So with consistency, let's talk about the dailies. Eric, do you guys on your team push either a power hour, power of three, dailies that need to be done every day? Yeah, we, in our coach basics right now, we're kind of doing the daily activities that everybody should be doing. <laughs> Good. Thank you, Eric. I like how he said that. We, we should be, we're doing the dailies that everybody should be doing. All right. Be. Every one of you guys are grinning ear to ear because you know exactly what that means. We should be doing it, but are we? Okay, one, two things I want you to think about. One is we want you to go from being a good coach to a great coach. Okay, that's one. Two, successful people do what unsuccessful people don't. Okay, I want you to evaluate what are you doing differently than the average person out there and what is going to separate you from being a good coach to a great coach. Okay, so going down to the dailies, I appreciate you bringing that up, Eric. Um, dailies. Okay, I'm going to highlight a few key dailies that we need to focus on. And if we do, you will rank advance on average once a quarter or elevate your income by 50% or more each month or each quarter, excuse me. Okay. So now let's break them down. Obviously, as you know, in the dailies, say there's 10 steps you got to do. Okay. Um, four through 10 is usually about the laundry list. Laundry need to get done every day. Yes. Do we like doing it? No. If, if we don't do the laundry that night, will we, will we die and not be alive the next day if it's not done? No. So it's necessary, important, but as we all know, it needs to get done, but it's not a necessity every day. So let's go back to the steps one through three on how critical those are. Okay, your first 10, 15 minutes of your business need to be these three steps. Okay, question for you all, another self-reflection. Say you have an hour of beach body to work. You open up your laptop, where's the first place you go? How many of you guys go to Facebook, the news feed? Okay. How many of you guys go to, go to your emails and want to see what Eric is telling you? How many of you guys go to the back office? Okay. Okay. Say, for example, you had one hour to do Beachbody, 20 minutes in, you're on your news feed and Facebook, 20 minutes in, you get a phone call, your spouse comes home, you, your dog or kids need attention, you close your laptop, and you walk away to take care of those things. The question you want to ask yourself is, did you move your business forward that day? The answer is no. Okay, it's great you got a lot of great ideas from watching newsfeed and checking everybody else out and what they're doing in their businesses, but did it move your business forward? So we want to go from all this that we need to do in Beachbody because it's so overwhelming and there's so much to do to focusing in on this. Single action, actionable behaviors or items that need to be done to elevate your business and move forward. Okay, those three steps that I want to tell you about it. The number one is broadening your sphere of influence. Okay, broadening your sphere of influence, adding more people on Facebook, Increasing that list of contacts that you have, whatever your sources may be in doing so. Very, very critical because you need an audience. You need a following. You need people wanting to be you. Okay? And that attributes to the posts and why we do that. The second one is having conversations with people, nothing about the coaching opportunity. Very, very vital. And I'm going to come back to that one on how important that one is. And I would guesstimate about probably five a day. Uh, that would be very healthy. 
And once again, remember how simple that is. It's, oh my gosh, you got a redheaded kid. I have a redheaded kid. Oh my gosh, we're so much alike. Let's connect. We're best friends. You see what I'm saying? It's very simple to find a connection with people moving forward. Um, and, and where does every conversation end? It, every conversation should end to something that Beachbody offers. You know, for example, talk about freedom or time, opportunity, health, um, unhappiness, um, you know, wanting a spouse or to be home more or cutting out a, a part-time job. When you get intimate and personal with people, they break down their guards and they share. Okay, it's called BRT. It's build a relationship of trust. Okay, and so we want to focus but allow conversations to organically go there so then there's trust there. If you force anything, you, you break that bond of trust and, and you're going to lose that person from joining you on any opportunity that you have. Okay, so very, very important there. So I'm going to come back to that one again. The third one is your inviting. You're inviting to coaching opportunity and then inviting to challenge groups. And Eric, I'll let you dictate how many per day or per week those should be um, with the team here. But so those are the three steps. So at the beginning of every hour when you're sitting aside for Beachbody, your first 15, 20 minutes should be those steps, okay? Consistently, the consistent word that I gave you is consistently. Um, and then if Eric calls you, hey, Brian, how's your business? I know you're new, you're under, you know, you've know, you only been with the business for a couple months, How, how's your business going? And, and he's gonna say, did you do those three steps? And if you say no, Eric will say, hey, Brian, call me back in 20, get those things done and call me back. That's how important they are. When uh, when we talk to some coaches, you know, when they hit, you know, the two star, five star category, and we interview them kind of saying, what are your best practices or what makes you so good as a coach? It's funny how a lot of times coaches will say, I don't know. Okay, that kind of throws me off because how would you not know what makes you successful? You're over hundreds of coaches and you're making thousands weekly. How do you not know what makes you successful? And then you peel it back saying, okay, well, what is it? You see their behaviors and then they come back and say, I just do what I'm told. So they're doing what they're told on a daily basis, knowing that will give them success. So that's why it's important to stay consistent on these dailies. And once again, if you want to be a good coach to going great, you want to go from a good coach to a great coach, do these vital, very important things. The second one is belief, belief in self. How important is belief in yourself? How many of you guys honestly believe that you deserve to earn 500 or 1,000 weekly? Okay. It, it's easy to say, <laughs> I know, I know you guys do. It's easy to say it, but how many of you actually believe it? Like taste, feel, and see it. Okay. That's one commonality I see with coaches that elevate through this business. They set a goal and by gosh darn it, they're going to hit it no matter what. I'm going to use an example here. There's a coach that I talked to um, in January and in February, she hit a goal of hers hitting top 100, got a call from Carl Deichler. She calls me and goes, I'm going to hit that goal. I go, awesome, good job. I just barely got to know her, so I didn't really know her leadership, her attributes, her personality. And so she said she, she said she wanted to hit that goal, and she hit it. I was impressed. I was like, man, she's a goal setter. She accomplishes it. The second month, Carl was offering this, like, lettuce shredder, kind of an interesting gift, but it was, it was awesome. A lot of people wanted it. She goes, I want that lettuce shredder because it's from Carl, and it's, he's challenging me. I go, awesome, go for it. So she hit it. And they go, holy cow, this, this coach hits goals. So she's a two-star diamond coach. And she goes, I want to be five-star by the cruise, which was in April, March or April. I go, wow, that's like two months away. Okay, good luck. Um, awesome. So finally, I decided to challenge her a little bit because I wanted to see what she was made of. So I actually told her, I said, I don't think you're going to make it. And she goes, you know, Jeff, it actually doesn't matter what you think. I'm going to hit it anyway. Okay. But I was impressed with the peace of mind that she had and the confidence and belief she had in herself. So once again, I was curious. I wanted to know what made her so successful. Okay. What, one, I looked at her why. And her why I thought was pretty sound. Her husband was deployed. She was pregnant. And she, has one or, she had two children. So that's a pretty good why. Okay. The part of the why that I didn't know was the part that she kept quiet because it was personal. She had a child that was diagnosed with autism just recently. So she was dealing with the testings and all of that with her child. And on top of that, her sibling passed away the year before. Her siblings and mother fell into depression, couldn't hold jobs uh, because, of, because of coping with it. They moved in with her. Here she's in her late 20s, and she has to financially support her mother, her siblings, new kids, her husband's deployed, and she's pregnant. You see that why? Now that's a why. Your why has to be real enough to make this work. Her why was so strong, there was nothing getting in the way of her why. 
So I want you guys to evaluate your why and how strong is it? Is it, oh, I just need a couple extra dollars so I can go to the movies this weekend? Or is it life-changing for you and your family? If it is, you will hit your goals, and I'll guarantee it. You see it time and time again. So that's one. And then the second thing that I saw in her was I would have a phone call with her and discuss her business. All of a sudden, we'd get cut off, and her mother would get on the phone and say, did I ever tell you how great my daughter is? And I said, um, hi, um, no, <laughs> hello. And, she, and, she go, and then she would get off the phone. Then the next call, right again, right in, interrupting us saying, hey, let me tell you how great my daughter is and what she did today. Okay, she had somebody believing in her and telling her how great she was every single day. Okay, I call it her Jiminy Cricket. How many of you guys have a Jiminy Cricket sitting on your shoulder telling you how great you are and how much you deserve this? And not only they're telling you, but you believe it. That's the key right there. See, I, I challenged this coach saying, I don't think you're going to hit a goal. Did it matter what I said? No, because she internally believed she knew she was going to hit it. And she hit five star two weeks before her deadline that she gave me was to hit it. Okay, so that's peeling back the layers of belief and consistency on how important those are in this business. Okay, that belief system overrides all objections that you have. And, you know, for example, you know, let's kind of go back to the inviting side. Invite, invite, invite. We talk about it. You guys know you need to do it. It's scary. It's hard. Okay, we're going to talk about fears here and then how important belief is in overcoming objections. How many of you guys get objections in this business? Okay, we love them, don't we? Absolutely love them. <laughs> okay, so one example I want to share with you, I was in Indiana meeting with some coaches. And they, they were Emerald and Diamond coaches for a number of years. And then one coach was a new coach. We sat there and one coach, I said, guys, your time is of value. Time is money. I want to talk about what you like to talk about. And one coach says, please talk about overcoming objections. And I said, perfect. My background is sales. I love this topic. Let's do this. One coach raised her hand and says, you know, I actually don't get objections. And everyone's jaws dropped saying, how do you not? And so she explained why. She, when she came into this business, she researched everything she could. She goes, okay, People are going to question me on Shakeology on price and ingredients. And people are going to ask about what is this coaching opportunity. So she, got, she researched every possible response and answer and question she would get. So she educated herself. Okay? And then now what happens is, is when she approaches somebody, she actually subconsciously resolves the concern before it's a concern. Okay? So I want you to think about that a little bit. So she's, we'll, we'll do a scenario here. Okay? Um, We'll talk to, uh, so Laura, Laura, hypothetically speaking, you're, we, you and I are really good friends. Okay, Laura, is there two Lauras on here? Oh yeah, Laura Jean, J okay, Laura Herman, I see you. I don't see Laura Jean. Okay, Laura Herman. Okay, you and I are friends, okay? We get coffee together. You love coffee, I do too. Um, I want you to be a coach. I know you'd be an awesome Beachbody coach. And I know you'd love Shakeology, okay? The situation is you uh, work part two part-time jobs, your husband just got laid off because he's injured and you have three kids, okay? You live in a trailer park too, by the way. Um, but the thing is, so that's the scenario. I want to approach you really bad. I'm going, ah, she would, do, she would love Shakeology. But I know what your issue is going to be, right? It's going to be cost, price. How is she going to afford it? The other element to the story is you love coffee, but you're not, you don't just love coffee. You're a coffee snob. It's all about that Starbucks, okay? And you do three cups of Starbucks a day. Okay, you guys see what's going on right now. So, Laura, you love your coffee. I do, too. So, you and I, so this is what I say. Hey, Laura, you know I'm a part of this company called Beachbody. And you're like, yes, I see every one of your posts. And instead of turning that into a negative, say, oh, I'm glad you noticed. And, and hold your chest up high because you are posting a lot. People are noticing, and that's a positive. So, Laura says that, and I say, you know, we have this Shakeology that I think you and your family would absolutely love. I would love to, sh to share more with you or give you a sample of it. Right after that, what is her comment going to be? How much is it? I, and in her mind, she's thinking, I can't afford it. So instead of allowing her to answer, you say, you know, Laura, the first time I experienced Shakeology, I was wondering how I was going to afford it. And so I decided to dot, 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 and put in your story. And for this scenario, I would say I cut out two cups of coffee. I still take my one because I need it. And you think about the cost of that. That's three, four dollars a cup. Say it's three. Three times two, that's six a day. Six times 30, that's $180. I just offset putting it onto this Shakeology. So I wasn't out of pocket anything, and I was able to give additional nutritional value to myself, and I still get my coffee fix. 
So Laura, what do you think? Do you think that's something that you would like to try for a month? Sure. Okay. See what kind of <laughs> you see what kind of happens. I knew her because I because I got to know her. I found out what it was. And another example is somebody that knows everything about everything about everything. Okay. How many of you guys talk to people that are nutritionalists or know the ingredients like the back of their hand? And you're like, gosh, this person would be so good with Shakeology, but I'm intimidated because they know more about it than I do. Right? Okay. So we're gonna go over to Sarah. Do I have a couple Sarahs probably? All right, Sarah. Okay, Sarah, you're a nutritionalist and you know everything about ingredients, okay? But you, you also take your own Shakeology, or sorry, let me pull back. Sorry, you also take your back. own shake. You also take your own shake. But I want you to try my shake and I know you would just be such a good advocate for Beachbody. So how do we approach that? So say I go up to Sarah, hey Sarah, you know, we've been friends for a long time. I know you know a lot about ingredients. Um, you know, I'm a part about be I'm a part of Beachbody and she's going to say the same thing. Yes. I see you all over Facebook and you smile and say, I'm glad you noticed, or what did you like about something I posted recently? Um, but keep the, keep the focus on the conversation and say, Hey, Sarah, we have this shake called Shakeology. And guess what she's going to say? She's in, she knows everything. Remember? Oh yeah. I already researched it and I know all about it. Great. What'd you like about it? Well, just so you know, I have my own shake that I take. Awesome. What do you like about your shake? And Sarah's going to say, I love the plant-based proteins that are in my shake. Okay, we all know Shakeology has the same thing. So you build on that common belief. So Sarah, awesome. Shakeology has the same thing. What is it that you like about the plant-based proteins? Okay, then let the conversation go. What's Sarah waiting for? She's waiting for you to invite her. She's waiting for you to tell her why Shakeology is better than her shake. So don't give her that. So you talk about how great they are, then end it, give her a hug, smile, and say, awesome, Sarah, thanks for that time. I love talking nutrition with you. Glad we're friends. We'll talk again soon. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Walk away. She's going to sit there and go, wait a sec. You were supposed to throw, throw up on me about Shakeology, and you didn't. And you were supposed to tell me all about the ingredients and why your shake's better than mine, and you didn't. See, I, you know Sarah. So now Sarah's going to watch you walk away with confidence, with a peace of mind, knowing that your Shakeology is good for you. And one thing I forgot is when you're talking to her, always put in your testimonial why it's so important to you. You know, Sarah, that's awesome. You love your shake. I love my shake because dot, 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 or this is what it's done for me, dot, dot, dot. And just leave it as a statement and end. Walk away wanting Sarah. So you want Sarah to want more or to be curious about you. You walked away with peace, with confidence um, in your product. Now she's going to start questioning her own going, wait a sec. I want, what, I want what he has. What makes his so great? Why is he so happy? Okay, that's the triggers that we want. So now stemming back to inviting, I wanna ask you guys another question. So those are two scenarios on overcoming objections. And the belief in yourself carries through exactly what you're sharing. One question I wanna throw at you, how many times, how many touch points does a person need to have before they say yes? On average, hold them up. Okay, we got three, we got five or eight together for you guys. Five, okay, good guesses. On average, it's actually seven touch points. Uh, there you go, six. Okay, seven touch points. So now let's, let's uh, peel that back a little bit on what that means. Say you invite somebody and they say no. What do you normally do? You go cry on your pillow, you walk away with your tail between your legs and you're, you're upset. You're like, dang it, I am a horrible coach, I suck. No. It's your first touch point. It's the first time that person has actually been introduced. So they, it's not a no, it's a not yet. If you've learned from, uh, you know, go for no. Um, um, so so it's, that's one touch point. Okay, now the power of your posting. Why do we post so much? It's uncomfortable. You go from posting once in a while to now posting multiple times in a day. This is why we do it. Now, after you said, invited that person, now they're following you. You're on their radar now. So they're looking at your posts. So one touch point was your invite. Another post is your post you made. Another post, that's three. Now, the, the beautiful, the power of the infomercials that Beachbody offers. Okay, they're gonna see an infomercial. They'll see another infomercial. And sometimes people do not like it when their prospects run into other coaches. I want you to keep your chest high going, yes, I hope they run into somebody wearing a Beachbody shirt at the store, because that's a billboard for you. That's a walking billboard or they talk to somebody, oh my gosh, you have Shakeology too? What do you like about it? Oh, that's so cool. Okay, that's six. Now you're gonna go back and invite them again and they're gonna say yes. Now you're the best damn coach there is in the whole company because why? It's the touch points. Okay, so I want you to think about that. 
So there's fortune in the follow-up. Okay, and I want you to always remember how important follow-up is. I'm a big advocate for follow-up. In my, in my history with sales, the follow-up is where I, I got the deals, or I got the yeses, or I got people agreeing with me, because they had time to see the value of what their decision is going to be to their life. That's why your posters are so important, and that's why your inviting is so important. Okay, so now let's go back. I gave you three steps. And that second one, remember, broadening your sphere of influence, talking to people, nothing about the coaching opportunity, five a day. So let's peel that back a little bit. If you're talking to five people a day, that's five times seven, that's 35 a week. The following week, you got 35 more, plus the follow-up of the 35, that's 70 people. Who wants to throw in the towel now? I do not want to be talking to 70 people a week. I did not sign up for this, okay? You're like, I work from home. I'm all, I'm all internet-based. That's the last thing I want to be doing. So now let's be strategic with our time. Of those 35 people you talk to, on average, there's the 25-5-1 rule. There's t for every 25 people you talk to, uh, on average, about five people will listen to your opportunity and one or two will say yes, okay? So I want you to test this ratio out for me and tell me if it works. If it gr does, great. If it doesn't, say, Jeff, that sucked. It didn't work for me. But I want you to test it out every single day consistently because what you'll see is you're talking to five a day. That's 35 a week. You're going to have at least five conversations about the opportunity. One or two people will say yes. Okay, now the follow-up. I said, who wants to follow up with 35 people? No, that's the power of the dripping on Facebook or social media. They're all following you. Five people showed interest. So that following week, you follow up with who? You follow up with those five. Those five showed interest. That's your highest probability and your lowest hanging fruit. Okay, um, so with that, so then with that, you're gonna be bringing in on average one or two people a week or initially one or two every, you know, every other week. If we need to build up to that, once a week is a lot. That's four times, that's four coaches a month. Uh, we do want to build up to that, though, so keep that in mind, everybody. Um, we want to get that wheelhouse going of those three steps, and that's the power of this business. It's kind of the bloodline. Um, there's power in numbers. So you say you bring in four people a month. Realistically, we know 50% of people fall out, so you have two people moving your business forward that month. Okay? That's two times 12. That's 24 new coaches in one year. Who's not excited about 24 new coaches in a year? Isn't that a game changer for you? Yes. That's two, four, that's six new coaches a quarter. Okay, that, that will help you rank advance once a quarter. Okay, so keep that in mind. That's where we want to get each one of your businesses. But initially, it may be one or two coaches every other week. Initially, and that's two coaches a month. Okay, um, and maybe one will stick around. So that's 12 coaches a month. Okay, so that's the reality of how easy it can be and simple it can be. Okay. The other thing I want to share with you is how do we increase our probability of success uh, with ourselves? Okay, fears. How many of you guys have fears? How many of you have handicaps that are holding you back from success? Absolutely. Okay, I, if we had uh, less people, we can really uh, digest this a little bit more, but I'll bring up the three most common fears that we have. The first one is how many of you guys are perfectionists and hate to make a mistake? Okay, any perfectionist? <laughs> Eric, you're not. I am. I wish I wasn't. Oh, he turns it to Sarah. <laughs> okay, Steve is. Okay, failure is hard for me. I don't like it. I try to prevent it at all costs. But for you perfectionists, when you fail, you fall flat on your face. And then you get up and you're a new person because you, you will fight that failing at every chance you can. The healthy way to do it is our motto we had at, at Summit last year was failing forward. Very healthy to fail forward in small increments to learn and grow and perfect yourself in a small incremental stages. So for you perfectionists, fear of failure is a big one for you. So I want you to, over, I want you to challenge yourself on a daily basis to face, face that and not be so perfect. Don't go 110%, go 90% or 95. If you make a mistake on something and it's bugging you, just leave it. It's, that's how big it is for you perfectionists. Eric won't understand. He shook his head. He's not a perfectionist. But Sarah does. You get it, Sarah, huh? You get it. Okay, so I want you to focus on fear of failure. The second one is how many of you guys make posts and you fear what people are going to think about you? Oh, my gosh, what's, what are they going to think of me by posting this? Or what are, what's my image going to be now? Okay, that's fear of rejection. You fear what others think. And why do we do that? Because you guys are all leaders in your neighborhoods, communities, churches, your, 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 your circle of friends, you guys are leaders. You got, people look to you. That's why you guys make great coaches. And that's why you fear making a mistake. Okay? It's okay. And, and, and so fear of what people think of you or fear of rejection. 
you know if somebody stands strong and is passionate about something they stand for, you're not going to lose friends, but you're going to gain even more respect. Yeah, you'll get people questioning you, like, what the hell was that? Why did you post that? What are you doing? Yes, but own it. Be proud of it. They're going to come around and go, oh, that's awesome. I'm proud of you, Molly. Great job. That's a great post. I'm proud of you for the cause that you stand for. Okay? So, um, and so, and the third one is kind of 80% of coaches. Majority of coaches have this fear. And that's actually fear of success or fear of the potential within themselves. Earlier, I talked about belief and asked you guys, how many of you guys can taste, feel, and see that goal of yours you're shooting for? Whether it's helping, you know, 10 plus people or it's 500 or thousand dollars in your, in your pocket. Okay. Why do you not deserve it? Okay. I'm going to give you a quote that I kind of stand behind and I've had it with me for a number of years and it's actually re-quoted by Nelson Mandela. Okay. And he talks about this. It's our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that frightens us most. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, talented, gorgeous, or famous? Actually, who are you not to be? Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that people won't feel insecure around you. You were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within you. It's not just in some of us, it is in all of us. And when we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Okay, I want to challenge each and every one of you guys. I gave you three, I gave you three fears, and I want every one of you to face a fear every single day. Overcome it. Challenge yourself. Be a little uncomfortable. Make yourself a little vulnerable, and all it will do is bring you success. Okay? So with that, I want to kind of also, one other element is I did talk tell you guys a little bit about how I do triathlons. Last year, November, I did an Ironman. And many of you that know Ironmans, you actually register a year in advance and your training is between eight months to a 12 months of training. Well, for me, <laughs> I, uh, I approached it in the sense that I, you know, I'm self-confident, I'm self-motivating, I don't need anybody to help me. I've got this race, it's mine, I want it bad. So week one in my training, I, kill, I kicked it, I just rocked it. I, I was I'm like, I've got this race in the bag. Once again, guys, this is a year in advance. Week one. So week two, I go, I go into it on Tuesday. I'm in the pool swimming. Finally, an aha moment goes, I'm the only one here. And no, it doesn't matter if I do it or not. I, I start swimming. I start side stroking. I look over at the hot tub. I'm like, that hot tub is looking pretty nice right now. So I jump over and I go in the hot tub the rest of my workout. And what do I say to myself? There's later today and there's always tomorrow. Okay. The next day, all of a sudden, that mindset, I gave myself an out. That next morning, I was not feeling it to work out again. I saw a breakfast place. I went and sat at that breakfast by myself for 30 minutes and had this fantastic breakfast buffet. And what did I say to myself? There's later today and there's always tomorrow. I finished that week. I was supposed to have five, work day, five workout days and I only did two. Two rest days, two. So now I evaluated going, okay, that's an expensive hobby. I'm in pain, sacrificing a lot of time away from family. For what? Okay, if I don't accomplish this goal, then what am I doing? So I had to make some changes. Okay, the changes I did for myself was accountability. Once again, let me give you a little background. For, you know, I work full-time for Beachbody, nine to six. I have a commute of about 40 minutes. I also am a father of three daughters, as I mentioned before. And uh, for my church, I'm actually over eight congregations for the uh, sports, for men, women, and youth. So that's a full plate. So I committed myself to two nights a week to my church responsibilities and uh, five days uh, to be, evenings to be with my daughters. So when I gave my cop out of there's always later today, or I don't have later today, but I use that in my mindset. Okay. So with that, I decided to get myself three accountability partners. Okay. The first one was somebody within the industry, okay? I want every one of you guys, if you don't have one already, to get a success partner. Why? Because they hold you accountable. I got a triathlon coach. He sent me my workouts. I hated it. Some days I sent it back half done. And sometimes, you know, your mind plays with you. You want to make it up. You want to fake it. You want to pretend. And sometimes you're like, fine, just take it, okay? So very important to hold yourself accountable, success partner. The second one is actually yourself, okay? Um, the power of yourself holding accountable. I'm a sticky note guy. Okay. I got sticky notes on my laptop. If you look at them, it has my daily goals on here. Okay. Your daily goals. Why do, you're going to hate your daily goals because they're going to stare you back in the face. 
Your daily goals, why are you going to hate them? Because it's one more to-do on your to-do list. We don't want one more thing to do. But this is how important it is. Next to your daily goal, put your yearly goal. Your yearly goal is what? To help over you know, 25, 30 people or to make an additional $500 or $1,000 a week? Okay, you're going to look at your daily goal and hate it. You're going to look at your year-end goal and be inspired. Your inspiration from that yearly goal is going to make you go back to that daily goal and kick it in the butt. You're going to own that daily goal because that year-end goal is so much more important to you. Okay, so that's the power of the accountability of yourself. Now, the third accountability is actually somebody outside the industry, a significant other, a spouse, a loved one. And so I challenge every one of you guys to think about that. With my story I wanted to share with you, six months before my race, I walked in the door at my house. And I walked in, as many of you guys know with kids, you walk in and you expect everything to be perfect. Dinner's cooking, smelling great. Wife's standing there, just can't wait for you to be home. Your kids are on the couch just sitting there perfectly, right? Isn't that the ideal way to come home? Brian, Steve, Eric, Stacy, all of you guys, Nexus, Nexus 5. Um, so so you, you come home and you expect that. I came home, my wife is very loyal, supportive, and in, in my crazy ambitions. And she looked at me and straight faced me. And she says, what are you doing home? I go, what are you talking about? I'm home. My day's over. I'm here. Dinner. She goes, you shouldn't be here. She goes, you slept in this morning. You did not work out at work. And I know, and so you, you shouldn't be here. Go do your workout. I said, Amber, don't worry about it. It's one day. I'm checked out. I don't want to. I'm not feeling good. I deserve a break. I used everything possible. She didn't even budge. And she says, you shouldn't be here. I said, fine. I grumbled, complained, and I went out the door. I went and did my workout and I came home and I gave her a big hug and I said, thank you. She goes, I hate your goal. I hate it more than anything because we miss you here. But I know how important this is to you and because it's important to you, it's important to me. When I crossed that finish line, who was there with me? My three accountability partners, my tri-coach, myself, and my wife to share in the success of that, of that finish. Okay. So to increase the probability of success in this business, I want to challenge you guys to get a success partner outside, spouse, loved one, significant other, family member, and set them down and say, hey, guys, this is what I'm making today. I'm making, I'm making $100 a week, and this is my rank. In three months, sit down with them again and say, say, was it worth it? How did we do? And should we do it another quarter? Okay. What that does is you actually gain yourself support. And, say, and at the beginning, when you sit them down now, say, I need to set aside these hours. I need your support to allow me to really put the time and energy needed to make this opportunity reality. Imagine making $100 a week, and in three months, you're making 200 to 250 a week. You guys sit down, and you say, oh, my gosh, was that worth it? And then you say, can you imagine what one more quarter will do? Now you're dabbling into the 500 a week. Now that's the reality of this. We just need to be held accountable, and we need the right tools. Okay? Your team has the right tools necessary to make it happen. Now incorporate these, these actionable behaviors that we just talked about in this call, and you guys will be on your road to success. Okay? And that's my message I share with you guys. And so I do want to challenge you, one, to face your fears, the three that I gave you. The second one is to face the dailies, those three-step dailies that I gave you consistently for a good week and a half to two weeks. And we're going to do a follow-up call to see how you guys do. And as a team, if you want to hold yourself accountable on a PM message, a Facebook thread, I don't care how, but hold each other accountable on these. And, um, and then the third one is to get your three accountability partners. It will elevate your business and, and help you succeed. So that's the message I have for you guys. I appreciate the time I've had to, to be on here uh, with you guys on your team call. And so that's kind of what I wanted to leave with you guys. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Jeff. I very much appreciate it. I think everybody got a ton from it. I saw lots of notes going down and, and eyes popping and whatnot. So, yeah, I really appreciate it. And you guys, obviously, I'll be posting that homework. I like to call it homework. We'll, we'll post that homework in the coach group. Jeff's in that coach group, too, kind of watching over us a little bit. So uh, I'm going to post it, and let's all get our three, you know, our three accountability partners. We'll get those, get those listed so everybody knows what they're doing. And, you know, we'll just, we'll make it, what do you guys need, a week to get the homework done? End of the week? Molly, what do you think? End of the week? Yeah, Molly's on mute still. So, yeah, I guess with that, I just really appreciate you coming on the call, Jeff, and everybody for taking the time out to get on the team call. I know it means a lot to me. It means a lot to Jeff. And let's, let's keep rolling. Everybody have a good night. Go get some dinner if you haven't had it yet. I know I haven't, so I'm starving. 
And you guys have a good night. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. See you guys. Bye. Thank you.